it's a joy to have you here with us. It's a joy to connect this morning. What a wonderful day God has given us. This is the day the Lord has made for you and I to rejoice. I know you've been rejoicing before this. I just want to let you know that you need to escalate your joy. If you've not been rejoicing before this, well, get ready for a double joy. God is about to give you a dose, a double, triple, double, double, triple dose of joy. So I just wanted to stay tuned and, and participate as we worship and as we praise. Once again, welcome to Faith Chapel, all nations capital. I am Pastor Pat and my wife Jane, my daughter Vanai and my son Judah. And we are ready to just uh, allow the Spirit of God to lead us and to guide us and to bring us to the place where we can worship. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for this service. We ask for your glory. We ask for your presence to fill this place. Let your spirit lead us, O oh God. Fill this place with Fill this place with your presence. Oh, everybody, release the sound of worship right now. We praise the Lord. Jesus, we worship you this morning. We worship you. We come with this given. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you. You died and rose again. You are the Lamb of God. Alive right now. You died for us. Jesus is 
joining the angels, God, we cry holy. Holy, 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 holy,
the Holy Ghost is coming to blow away. Because of 
Blessing for coming to the altar 
and ministering to God. You have your blessing. Amen. Expect it and walk in it. Okay, Judah? Amen. Okay, Vanai and my wife Jane, you have your blessing. I also embrace my own. I have my blessing. I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting the incredible. We cannot encounter God that way and remain the same. It's not that God cannot do it. He just wants to prove to you that you are not tuned to a session run by man, but a session run by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. I want to continue from where I stopped last Sunday. I continue on threading the needle. Yes. I did threading the needle part one last Sunday. Yes. My God, go back on YouTube or go back to Facebook and watch that. Threading the needle. Uh, it's never, uh, it's never, uh, don't never take it for granted that you can pass the thread through the needle. Don't ever take it for granted. Uh, don't, just don't. If you've never tried to take a needle and to pass the thread through the to, through through the uh, the hole of the needle, please take some time and try. Especially if the if the needle is tiny, even when the needle is not too tiny, they, it's not it's not a it's not a drive through drive through process. It is a it is it is a something that will take focus. It's gonna take time sometimes, you know, and it takes long. Sometimes you will need help to do it. Therefore, I want to talk about threading the needle because in our lives we will find ourselves. In spots where we need to thread the needle. So I just want to continue from that point. And uh, I want to begin by saying, I shared so much last Sunday. I don't want to go back there. We looked at Acts chapter 27 and Acts chapter 28. And, uh, and we saw how Apostle Paul uh, threaded the needle of a shipwreck in the sea. And how he heard from God and God told him, do not fear, you're not dying here. You must go to Rome and stand before uh, before the authority there. And therefore, you know, Apostle Paul told the people, fear not, you're not dying. You're not dying. But he also told them before uh, you get to Rome, there will need to be uh, joy and dancing and celebration, which we say is a key between your station and your destination. Praise is a bridge between your station and your destination. And therefore, uh, Apostle Paul, I mean, we looked at that. Go back and go back. Just go back. Go back and look at that, uh, uh, you know, because it's important. I, I want to begin by saying human beings are in three parts. We are one, but in three. We are one, but in three. This is where I begin. Number one, we have the body. Now, the body, the physical body was necessary and is necessary if you are going to live on the face of the earth. It is important for you to be embodied. I am embodied. My name is Patrick. I am embodied within this body. So the body was given to us for identity. The body is for identity. I'm going to break down body, spirit, and soul. I'm going to break it down. So the body's purpose is for identity. So when you see me embodied in this body, you know you've seen Patrick. When you see your wife embodied in her body, you know you have seen your wife. The body was given for identity. That is why you have a name, all right? That is why you have a name. Because if, I, if I'm looking for, if I'm looking for, uh, let me give a good example. If I'm looking for my wife, Jane, how do I know I have found her? It takes my eyes perceiving her embodiment to be able to recognize that she is actually Jane. And so the body, please uh, follow me, I'm going somewhere. The body is given to us for the purpose of identity. That is how the earth identifies you. Now God doesn't need your body to identify you because God knows you in the spirit. Before anybody catches you in the spirit, God caught you a long time ago. So for God, he doesn't need this identity. But if you're going to live on this earth, if people are going to know who you are, and if you're going to relate with people, and if your name is going to be registered uh, as, as an owner of properties, you have to be embodied. No invisible person owns property on the face of the earth. It is illegal for invisible bodies to own property. It is illegal. They are not allowed to do that. That's why when God wants to bless you, when God, when God, when God spoke to your father and mother and you were conceived, it was proof that God wants to bless you. Because ownership belongs to those that are embodied or have a body. I'm going somewhere. Please come with me. So you have a name. I have a name, Patrick. 
But you know what? There could be many Patricks. So how how do how does a body still help me to uh, to get my identity, or for people to identify me? You, you see, even if you are twins or triplets, no one on the face of the earth has the same dental formula. Did you know that, Vanaya? No one on the face of the earth has the same dental formula. They are all different. Why? Because wow. it's, the, it's the uniqueness of embodiment. It is the unique identity that God gave you. In other words, God took his time to create you and give you something that billions of people do not have. And one of those things is your dental formula. And secondly, wow. your fingerprints. Wow. So please don't look at me and say uh, and, and, and dislike yourself. I want to let you know God took time. He considered the fingerprints that were out there and he said, okay, which ones are not there yet? He said, I'm going to give you this one because nobody on the face of the earth wow. has it. Amen. God That's took God. his time to create you. Wow. He took his time to make you unique. He took his time to give you a, an identity that nobody on the face of the earth will ever have. No one, no one can be wow. you and you cannot be anyone Amen. and anyone Amen. cannot be everyone Amen. and everyone cannot be somebody. Amen. I need you to understand. I'm going somewhere, please. Follow me. This is the only way you become legal on earth. Otherwise, you are illegal. If I, if I call for Jane, and I'm looking, I'm looking, and she's answering from the from from invisibility, that is a ghost. Okay, Jenny, if that is a ghost. That will be a ghost. If if I call Jenny. And, and, and as, as bring me a cup of tea. And this tray comes floating in the air with a cup of tea on top. I'm going to run for my life. Because that is an illegality. Hey, hey Jesus. Hey. It is an illegality. So for you to be legal on earth, you need your body. Wow. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You need your body. The second thing that you find in man is the soul. Somebody say the soul. soul. Yeah. Uh, the soul, the soul. What is the soul? No, we have the embodiment. And then within the embodiment, we have another compact, compartment. And it is called the soul. Now, the soul was given to man for connection with the other people. Oh. It was given to man for connection. That's the whole reason why we have the soul. It is a relationship dimension. So your body was for identity, wow. but your soul is for connection wow. with human beings. I'm just introducing you to you right now. You don't know why God gave you that body, and therefore you don't know why God gave you that soul, but let's break it down. Let's break it down. Because we've got to thread our needle. And so I'm trying to go down to the basics and also kind of try to rise up to the top of the basics so that I can help you understand what is going on? So the soul is for connection. Somebody say connection. Connection. I would not have connected with my wife if I never had a soul because the feelings are in the soul. Love is released from the soul. Hatred is released from the soul. It's not the body that hates. It is the soul that hates. The body doesn't hate. It is the soul that hates. The body may express the hatred or express the love, but the body never hates. It is the soul that hates. Let me give you a good example. Two people quarrel, and then they, they, they get angry. Anger is a function of the soul. And what happens when they get angry and it gets nasty, I mean, it escalates, and they really get verbal, uh, you know, with all these uh, obscene words and and, and get closer to each other. Temperatures are going up. And, and one person begins to fold his fist secretly. And the next thing you know. The body, uh, the body expresses the soul. There is a punch or the fight. A physical fight is an expression of the soul. So the body doesn't hate. It is the soul that hates. However, it is the body that expresses the hatred of the soul. Oh my God. So when you see somebody... Uh, frequently getting into a mess, fights, and stuff like that, there is a problem in the soul, and that is the thread, the needle that we need to thread. That is the needle we need to thread. Wow. Somebody
you say the soul? The soul. Let me give you a few examples. You see, Esau was to receive the birthright from Jacob. He was the uh, one that was to receive the birthright. From Isaac, yes, from Isaac. Thank you, Suri. From Isaac. From? Isaac. Isaac said unto Jacob. So Esau was to receive from Isaac. Esau was to receive from Isaac. Mm -hmm. Esau was to receive from Isaac the blessing of inheritance. But what happened is uh, Esau got too hungry. And, uh, and, and Jacob, you know, Jacob just deceived him. But I think Esau was too easily deceivable. I mean, he was, you see, hunger is not of the body, it is of the soul. Mm. You see, food feeds the body so the body grows, but it is the soul that feels hungry. Mm. Huh? The feeling of hunger is in your soul, but when you eat, you feed the body. Oh my God, this is so nice, I'm just enjoying myself. Wow. So if you, so Esau needed to thread his needle. He needed to, to he was told, okay, if I give you food, are you going to give me, are you going to give me your birthright? And Esau did the worst thing. He allowed his soul, his feelings to take from him what was rightfully his. And this is what happens when we operate in feelings. We lose what is rightfully ours. Why? Because feelings will never lead you in the paths of God. Especially if they are negative feelings. Or feelings that are not right. They will never bring you. So this guy, he trades his birthright for a platter or a plate of food. 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 F-O-O-D. Food. Food. That tells me he had no control over food. This guy loved food. It's not bad to love food, but when food has you, that's where you go wrong. As in, you don't want to eat, but when you, when you see food, you eat. You don't want to eat ice cream, but when you open the fridge, you take the ice cream, put it in the bowl. You have no plans to take ice cream. If, <laughs> there has to be a decision where you say, I'm eating now, and I'm not eating now. I'm taking ice cream now, and I'm not taking ice cream now. I'm taking pizza now, I'm not taking pizza, pizza now. You have, there has to be that decision. That is what I call threading the needle. Threading the needle, threading the needle, threading the needle. Being able to look at a situation and say, okay, I'm going to look at this ice cream, and I'm not going to eat it. I'm even going to open this ice cream, and I'm not going to eat it. I will even serve it on the bowl, and I'm not going to eat it. That is a lie of hell. You cannot... Open that ice cream, get a bowl, serve that bowl, and then look at the ice cream melt and say, I'm not going to eat you. I promise you, if you try that, you're going to eat not one bowl, but two bowls. And that's what the problem is. This guy traded his birthright for a platter of food. And so Jacob knew he didn't have the identity of Esau. He knew he didn't have the body of Esau. And Isaac knew, oh my God, this is about to get good. Isaac knew that Esau had hairy hands. But Jacob did not have hairy hands. So, because Isaac was going blind, he couldn't tell who was who. Uh -huh. So when Jacob designed that my father may want to just confirm who I am, he took the hide of he just faked his hand to have hair he took the hide of a goat and wrapped his hand so that he would be hairy and when he came to Jacob to bless him Jacob said come near I pray thee that I may feel thee my son whether thou be my very son Esau or not he faked the identity of Esau mm. oh he tried, to, he tried to put on himself the body of Esau. Wow. Now, but the problem with 
the half with Isaac is that he was operating in his soul. He said, I want to feel. I want to feel. Oh. Feelings will never lead you in the right direction. He said, I just want to feel. If I can feel, I'm good. I'm going to bless you. Isaac walked in his feelings oh. and blessed the wrong person. Oh. But somehow it was a divine agenda of God. But I have a challenge with Isaac because if you flow with feelings, if I have two children and I have two children and I say, I feel like blessing this one, I, feel, I don't feel like, that's wrong parentage. You cannot operate with your children on the basis of feelings. Now, you operate on the basis of feelings when it comes to good feelings, love, uh, uh, you know, and, and care and compassion and uh, mercy and uh, and all that. But when it comes to negative feelings, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot favor one and not favor the other. You cannot be, uh, you cannot, you cannot do that. You cannot operate in feelings when it comes to negative feelings. You cannot hate one and love the other. You cannot love one and hate the other. You cannot do that. So, is Isaac operates in feelings? And that's a dimension. He needed to thread his needle. He never did it right. But when I get to heaven, I want to ask God, what exactly happened there? I want to know what happened there. What happened there? Because Jacob went off with a blessing. Jacob went off with a blessing. Let me give you another example. I'm talking about the soul. Connection. So, so 